Hey guys, Alex Hamilton, U Rise Education. Right now we're standing at the tower at the University of Texas campus in Austin. We're gonna show you all around campus this beautiful afternoon. Today, we're starting on the east side of campus among the university's various athletic facilities, including Dish Falk Field, home to Longhorn Baseball, which holds the distinction of having earned six NCAA championships and being the winningest team in college baseball history. Nearby, you'll find the university's tennis courts. Across the highway, you'll find the Frank C. Irwin Special Events Center, a campus venue. Just north is the historic Hargis Hall of the School of Social Work. A short walk away from the Jamail Swimming Center. Continue past the athletics to find the renowned Hicks School of Social Work, which has served students for over 70 years. From there, it's a short walk to the Recreational Sports Center, which contains plenty of opportunities to keep students active and in shape. Past that is the Moncrief Newhouse Athletic Center. And that brings us to Daryl K. Royal Texas Memorial Stadium, home of Longhorns football, and the largest stadium in the Big 12 Conference. Across the street, you'll find dorms such as San Jacinto Hall. Adjacent is the university's Eder Harbin Alumni Center. The Art Building and Winship Drama Building sit nearby. Hatton Hall holds the university's liberal art departments. Across the mall is the Jackson School of Geosciences. Which faces the Powers Student Activity Center. By its side lies a statue of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. who visited campus in 1962. Nearby is the Shock Building of UT's Environmental Science Program. Which faces Rappaport of the Department of Economics. There are over 5,000 trees on campus and it's only fitting that you find some of them at Shock, shading us from the heat. Wagoner holds the departments of Classics, Sociology, and Philosophy. And to our right, you'll find the state-of-the-art Gates Dell Complex of UT's famed Computer Science Program, which also contains departments of Statistics and Data Science, an Artificial Intelligence Laboratory, among other facilities. While Welch Hall holds departments for various physical sciences, including chemistry and physics. Past Gates Dell is the O'Donnell Building of the College of Natural Sciences which sits across Norman Hackerman, which contains departments of neuroscience, chemical engineering, and various labs and equipment. Down the mall, you'll find other buildings, such as Moffitt Molecular Biology, Patterson Labs, and the Physics, Math, and Astronomy Building. Completed in 2021, the Thomas Energy Engineering Building contains classrooms and project spaces. South, you'll find the renowned Macomb School of Business, which contains both undergraduate and graduate programs in business and management related subjects. And this brings us to the historic Gregory Gymnasium. Continue along the mall and you'll find the Jester Center, which houses student government and African diaspora studies, and its neighbor, the Perry Castaneda Library, the main one on campus. With 8 million volumes, the UT Austin Library System ranks fifth in academic libraries in the country.
Continue along 21st Street and you'll see the University Teaching Center in the historic University Christian Church, which sits near the University Catholic Center. That brings us to Littlefield Fountain on the South Mall. Benedict Hall houses the departments for Spanish and Portuguese. Meanwhile, mazes and bats hold other liberal arts departments, such as the Department of Government. On the other side, Rainey holds French and Italian, Calhoun holds Middle Eastern Studies, and Parlin holds English. This brings us to the statue of George Washington, who overlooks UT's famous main building and tower, which stands over 300 feet tall. Past the Flan Academic Center, you'll find the biology labs, and my favorite spot on campus, the Turtle Pond. For over 80 years, the pond has been a resource for biology students and a place for everyone on campus to rest and admire the wildlife. North is Gearing Hall of the College of Natural Sciences. To its west is Gordon White of the Institute for Urban Policy Research. From here, you can see the historic Littlefield home of the University Development Office. Head east to find Painter Hall, the home of the School of Human Ecology, as well as the UTeach Institute. Continue down 24th Street to find the Seven Mustang statue of the Texas Memorial Museum, which sits next to the Art Museum. Here, in addition to various art exhibits, you'll find the departments of art and art history. Up the hill is the Doty Fine Arts Building. Adjacent is the Performing Arts Center. In the distance, you can see the Lyndon B. Johnson Library and its affiliated building, Richardson Hall, which houses the Program for Public Leadership. And lastly, that brings us to the Myers Track and Soccer Stadium. UT Austin has garnered quite a name for itself, both domestically and internationally, and it's no wonder why. Even during the brief time I was there, I had the opportunity to see the development that the school was undertaking across campus. From new buildings and installations such as the Speedway Mall, to the various events held across the university. At the undergraduate level, UT Austin has an acceptance rate of around 32% making it very competitive, especially for a state school. In addition, around 10% of the undergraduate student body is international. Unlike most state schools, UT Austin has several essays that it asks its students to write. This can be really beneficial if you seek to help yourself stand out on the writing portion. Let's take a look at the first prompt. Here, we have a typical why major essay. Fortunately, as the question asks about nothing else, we can focus extensively on answering this one question. I always find a chronological approach ideal when responding to these types of questions. You can begin with a hook explaining how and when you first became interested in your subject of choice. Whether that was a journal that you received during your birthday that sparked your interest in writing, or a trip to the science museum you took in elementary school which sparked your interest in chemistry. Of course, the bulk of the essay should focus on why you are qualified to pursue the subject by referencing any kind of coursework, extracurricular experience, or research. Lastly, you want to end the essay by talking about what you hope to accomplish in the field after graduation. This will really help the story tie together. Now, let's check out the second one. This prompt is pretty much asking you to complete a standard community or leadership essay. The twist is that it gives you space for multiple experiences or activities. Rather than linking your activities at random, I suggest you organize these experiences into some kind of overarching theme. That could be how you develop empathy, both as a tutor and as a volunteer at the hospital. 
or it could involve your ability to organize events, which you've done both for your musical choir and for a cultural affinity group. You can spend the first half of the essay talking about this, and then we can connect it to UT. Be sure to mention any relevant clubs or courses from the school website that would fit here. Outside of the classroom should be pretty easy to talk about, but for inside of the classroom, try to look for courses such as seminars or those involving a lot of group work. That will give your skills plenty of space to shine. Now, let's take a look at the third prompt. Here is our Y School essay, but in this case, we want to link it to the theme of changing the world. What this means is we want to talk about the preparation UT will give both academically and as a person. Academically, you'll be prepared to succeed in your subject of choosing through the university's courses, research, and professors. You can therefore talk about how the subject will allow you to become the lawyer, scientist, or business person you wish to become in order to make a difference. At the same time, by referencing the rich extracurricular life that the university offers, you could talk about the development of confidence, empathy, and leadership skills, which will all complement you in your profession. This is a great way to tie the essay together. Now, let's look at the last prompt. What this prompt asks for is obviously much more informational in nature, but that doesn't mean that we can't make it a compelling essay. Obviously, we were all affected by the pandemic to varying degrees. For many students, that brought difficulty with virtual learning. For others, they experienced health crises that affected themselves or those close to them. Whatever your experience, if it indeed made learning difficult, then be sure to talk about the experience and how it affected you but also remember to discuss what exactly you did to overcome that situation. If it was a difficulty in virtual learning, then did you decide to reach out and contact your teachers more through email? If it was a health crisis, then how did reflecting on the experience grant you a new valuable perspective? If there are things beyond the pandemic, then mention those instead. This could be a personal issue or a family matter that arose that affected your performance. Just be sure to provide context and as we discussed before, make sure you showcase your perseverance through the situation. And that's it. What did you think of UT Austin besides the obviously adorable turtles that we had a chance to visit? Let me know what you think in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this video, then be sure to check out some of the others that we have on tours and essay guidance. Also, be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already. Each video takes a lot of time to film and produce, so I really appreciate all the support that you've given me. And as always, guys, Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.